Um, I'm so humbled to be alongside these amazing poets. I've, I've been crying over there. You guys have done amazing. I'm humbled. Um, so I have two poems, and one of them is about gentrification. That itself says what matters to me. And the second one is about finding my voice. Thank you. So emotional. They've done so good. <laughs> All right. So this first one's called, wait. So when y'all are feeling whatever I'm putting down, you pick up whatever I'm putting down. Can I get snaps? We can snap? All right, we can do that. All right. Gentrification in the hood. People that look like me pushed further into poverty are homes and hoods bulldozed for condos. We don't know anything about swiping credit cards and racking up cars. The only American Express I've ever known was the blue one labeled Mass DTA. They removed the sneakers hanging on the electric lines because they're too ghetto, ignorant to the fact that they were there as remembrance for the loved ones we've lost. They paint over the sides of brick buildings, fixing what isn't broken. Loud murals, quiet gentrification. They chase out summer lunch programs, spreads a sustenance significant for the survival of schoolboys and girls. They master the plan of building more aff affordable housing, but why aren't they making housing more affordable? They pride themselves on diversity and inclusivity as they push people out that look like me. But in 2023, DEI is looking more like disconnecting everybody inhabiting. Chamaquitos playing ding dong ditch are replaced by ditches of dirt waiting for zoning board of appeals to approve their next establishment. And rent skyrockets so the woman who sold cupped ice cream and candies soon can't afford to live with us. I once read, we can't have change with no sacrifice, but the ones who have to sacrifice are not the ones who are pushing us out, but rather the ones who have to worry about the overpriced buildings, apartments, and places we once called home, parks and green spaces we once gathered at when we felt alone. They don't know what it's like when they see people th that look like me. They see people in poverty. What we see is community. What we are is unity. Thank you. This next one is called The Silence and Resilience. I know what it's like to communicate via pen and paper because your triggers overpowered my emotions and intuition. Your lack of self-regulation and abundance of aggravation silenced me beyond speech. I learned to hold my breath long enough to accommodate someone else's demons and to carry baggage without uttering a word. Believe me, when you tell me I'm too outspoken, that's 10-year-old Nayeli healing scars that aren't seen with the naked eye. Healing from irritation, pop blood vessels on her cheeks, and the urge to cry. Healing from the index finger placed at the center of her cupid's bow, hush. Healing from the voice that once cracked, stumbling across her tongue, searching for the nearest exit because Lo que pasa en esta casa, se queda en esta casa, and calladita, te ve más bonita. When I text you stanzas or stutter as I try to get my point across, and my eyes water and I turn away as I'm trying to elaborate why that hurt me, trying to unpack why I reacted that way, don't confuse my vulnerability for weakness, or my lack of face-to-face -face communication as suck. My vulnerability is my strength, and I found the voice you took. I carry the type of baggage that makes a woman like me resilient. And although resilience is arguably a strength, it's a trait many Latina women develop through the narcissism inflicted on them by their parents. It's not a choice. It's heavy. It's a meal that leaves me starved. I'd rather my spread for growth by breaking a generational curse and healing from it by writing in verse. Your unpacked trauma and reluctance to heal will not dim my light. This is my testimonial my healing from enduring this plight. I relearn to be silent when I listen to learn, not respond. My voice will be heard whenever I want it to. I'm no longer a pawn. Thank you. <laughs>